finally finished watching season 1 of Legion. Current status? Can't distinguish what's real and what's in my head anymore. Howdy everybody, Carla here, and happy belated Star Wars Day! Yay! I'm actually saying this because I am recording this video on Star Wars Day, which means that I'm recording it on a Thursday, which means that I literally have only one day to edit and render this video before I have to upload it on Friday, which might still not happen. But work has been a bitch this week and I haven't had time to do anything, so if this episode is way shorter and way more rushed than my episodes usually are, I'm sorry for that. I hope you can understand the timeline I'm running with here and keep that in mind as you watch. I really don't mean to be rushed, but it is what it is. Sorry. As I said in my intro, I finally finished watching season one of the new X-Men TV show Legion, which airs on FX and was created by Noah Hawley. And I have to say I really really loved it so that's what I'm gonna do today I'm just going to go real quick into the show what I thought about it the things I like the things I disliked I'm just going to talk about the show in general so like I said I love this show I think it was really weird but in a good way this is the show that isn't really for everybody I have a friend who actually asked me a couple weeks ago, hey, so what new shows are, are you watching? At that point, I hadn't actually started watching Legion, but I was like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna watch Legion. It's an X-Men show, maybe you'd like to give it a try. And she actually did, she watched the first episode before I did. And then she came back to me like, yeah, this isn't my show, like, this is not for me. And I kind of get it. I don't think the show is for everybody. It's, like I said, it's really weird. But I think if you're a fan of X-Men and if you're a fan of this character in particular, of David, and know where he's coming from, everything in the show makes so much more sense. Every decision that Noah Hawley takes actually makes a lot more sense and it just adds to the value of what this show is, what it was supposed to be. And it really is everything that a show about David Haller should be. So, for me as an X-Men fan, I loved it. I know it's not for everybody, but the critics seem to be liking it. And I really understand why, because I think it was a great show. So I'm gonna just start by mentioning really quick all the stuff that I liked about this show. First of all, Dan Stevens, man. That man is a national treasure. You've heard me gushing about this on Twitter, on social media, everywhere really. Dan Stevens is amazing, he's fantastic. Nobody else could play David the way he did and he deserves all the accolades that he's getting. He's going places, man. Look out for Dan Stevens, he's going to be big not too far from now. He's going to be huge and he's an amazing talent and I just love him so much in this show. It wouldn't have been the same without him at all. Then there's also Aubrey Plaza. This role was basically made for her. She took it, made it her own. She had fun twisting things around for us. And it, it just, it was obvious how much fun she was having when she was filming this. And that totally translates through the screen and makes her such an interesting character to watch. Always in the back of your mind as you're watching the show, you're hoping that she will make an appearance. And it was, she was amazing in it. I'm very glad that they're keeping her on for season two because I don't think the show would be the same without her. I really, really loved that character, how she portrayed it. She was excellent. As I said before, the show is not for everybody. It starts off really crazy. Like the first episode is really messed up. You don't know what's up or down. You don't know what's left or right. It's, it's all, you're just waiting for the whole thing to be a dream because it's so surreal. But I like that after the first episode, it turned a little bit more into a procedural, not necessarily, oh, somebody died, we have to find the culprit. It's not like a whodunit kind of thing, but just them trying to understand 
David's mind and what's real and what's not and trying to figure that out. It's a bit more procedural. So I like that because then you can move on from the stylistic choices of the pilot into an actual plotline that makes a lot of sense and keeps you intrigued. I really like the new powers that we got to see. The body switching was really interesting, but you know what? I especially like the, the powers that don't seem especially useful because one of the things that I've always loved about the X-Men mutants in general is that because your mutation is genetic, you might end up with a mutation that doesn't really do anything. <laughs> What's your power? Oh, I'm green. That's it. You can't really do anything with it. And I, I like that as about as much as I like the mutations that are actually powerful because it just goes to show that evolution can manifest itself in really weird and really different ways and then it's all very scientific it makes sense in my head so I like that you have mutations that don't really seem especially powerful like carrying carries for example where they're just you know one of them lives inside the other they're just two people sharing one body and it doesn't if Carrie wasn't inclined to fight if she wasn't a fighter, their mutation would do nothing, basically. So I like that and I like that they found a way to make it useful because that's a big part of the X-Men mentality and that even mutations that you would usually think don't do anything, like say Kitty Pride, for example, she walks through walls. It's, it's not a very, you know, offensive mutation in the sense that she can't attack people, but she's very useful in battle in many different ways. They find ways to make her useful. So I, I understand that idea and I love that idea and I like seeing it in the show. Also, I really loved all the X-Men connections. I mean, can we talk about the Shadow King? I, I knew the Shadow King was going to happen even before I watched the show because I got it spoiled on Twitter. I, I don't mind, I liked it. But I was really excited. It made me more excited to watch the movie because the, now I know that there's something familiar in it that isn't just coming out of Noah Hawley's mind that I know I'm going to love. The whole thing with the astral plane fights was exciting because that happens a lot in X-Men and we don't get to see enough of it in movies. I think I said this in my review for X-Men Apocalypse that we don't get to see enough of people fighting in the astral plane. It's always so epic and we don't see enough of it. And of course Xavier's wheelchair. I was watching that episode when they revealed that and I actually literally screamed out loud while I was watching it because it's so exciting to know that no, they're not just completely refuting the fact that David might actually be Xavier's son. So that's great because I was afraid of that, that they would do that when I started watching the show. Before I watched it, I was afraid that they would just completely ignore the fact that David is Xavier's son and just make him some random mutant. But I'm glad that they acknowledged it. I, I screamed. I really screamed. It was awesome. I also really love the meta references that they throw in. For example, I think I, I really love the rainbow connection. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was a ridiculous moment, but I loved it. And I think my favorite meta reference of it is David David's rational mind because it makes sense in so many levels. I laughed so hard. Not only because Dan Stevens is, of course, British, so he gets the chance to actually use his, his native accent uh, in the show, but also because it's a rational mind. It's like, oh, if you're in the US, you're the irrational part, and if you're, if you're British, you're the rational part, like the civilized part. It, that was funny. And just the whole meta thing where David's father is actually British in in the comics. So that makes a lot of sense. I love the cinematography. Uh, no, Holly, I haven't seen much by him, but I know his style. And I know that he really tries a lot of experimental stuff. I like that they did that here. He uses weird camera angles, strange lighting, innovative techniques. I liked it because it adds to the surreality feel of the entire show and it, 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 it adds a touch of now I don't I as an audience don't know what's real and what's not the special effects were mostly good I, I really like the way they did the slow-mo you know breaking stuff and David's powers really the explosion in the kitchen was amazing the the, the little fights when they were escaping clockworks um, and escaping division 3 were very interesting. In the end, that fight between Carrie and David, you know, the, the 
Blue Oni and Ren Oni just going at each other was fantastic. The only complaint I would have about the special effects is that sometimes the Shadow King looked weird. Like it was obviously a fat suit, basically. <laughs> and so, yeah, I was kind of iffy about it, but it was in the minority. And then just the whole idea of having a post credit scene is so great because we're so used to superhero movies having post credit scenes these days that it's just, it's great to see it on a TV show. I like the idea of the post credit scene. That was mostly what I liked. What did I dislike? Well, the season finale didn't feel particularly exciting to me. I, I have this thing lately where I'm actually liking more the build-up to the finale than the resolution itself. It's happened a few things like with Stranger Things, for example. My favorite episode is actually the episode previous to the finale and the same thing happened with with Legion. I loved episode seven. It was so good and quite probably one of the best episodes of TV in general that I've seen. I loved it so much, especially just the fact that we get to understand everything and David gets to understand what's happening. So because I liked the, the previous episode so much, the finale ends up being a little bit of a letdown. Like I didn't feel the excitement level that a lot of people did. Not that it was a bad finale, I liked it. It was just more of a wrapping up of, of, of things and it felt like an extension. Like I kept thinking to myself, I feel like they should have dealt with the Shadow King in episode seven but they didn't, so it felt like they were just stretching it out, and I didn't like that. But I like the way it ended though, so I, I don't mind necessarily. One of the things that I had trouble with is that I never connected with Oliver. I, I, I like that all the characters had their motivations, and I liked Natalie's motivation in trying to get Oliver back. But I didn't like Oliver, per se. I never connected with him. I felt like he felt out of place, which I know, I know that was kind of the idea because he was a man who was displaced in time, basically. He, he had been asleep for 20 years, so of course he's going to feel like the odd man out. But I just, I never liked him. And it bugs me because he's apparently going to be the big bad in season two and I don't feel anything for him, so it's weird. And also, you know, it's, it's a pet peeve of mine, but the whole, oh, I woke up from a 20 year coma and I just walked out of the building like nothing had happened thing. It bugs me so much. Things don't, don't happen that way in real life. And I know this is, you know, a fantasy story, basically. It's, it's fantasy sci-fi. It's not supposed to. There will be things that will be fantastical about it, but Oh, that is such a pet peeve of mine, and it always takes me right out of the story. I don't like it. As far as acting goes, most of the acting was amazing. My one pet peeve when it comes to the acting is Rachel Keller. I liked her as Sid. I, I, for the most part, she was really good. I felt her connection with David really well, but there were some scenes here and there where she didn't really convince me. So I hope that that gets better come season two. Then the post credit scene was a bit generic for me. I, I mean, I find it interesting. I've, I've seen people reviewing it and saying that maybe he was captured by Division 3. The one that I like the most is the idea that he was maybe captured by Mojo, which I find really interesting. That would be really cool. And it, it really does remind me a little bit of the way Mojo kind of operated in Wolverine and the X-Men. So, yep, I like that. But I think it was sort of a generic post credit scene. It's like, okay, David gets captured because we have to leave you with some kind of cliffhanger for season two. And again, the way that Rachel Keller sort of reacted to it, I didn't like. So it felt kind of flat a bit to me. I like the idea of having a post credit scene, like I said before, but the content of it itself wasn't my favorite. Now, my biggest gripe with this show, however, is that it seems that David doesn't actually suffer from multiple personality disorder. And this is really something that bothers me because that was one of the things that I loved the most about Legion in the comics. Because see, with, with superheroes, especially Marvel, you have these metahumans that have these really vague and not really defined set of powers that are really 
really strong, but they are strong because they they aren't given any definition. They aren't given any limitations. For example, you have characters like Scarlet Witch, for example. First as a mutant and then as a metahuman, she has reality bending powers. That's the definition itself. And that goes from, oh, I can make little hexes and, and you know, make things explode, sort of like that, to, oh my god, I can rip apart the entire fabric of reality. So she's this, like, hugely overpowered being, but it's simply because you haven't defined what her powers are. With David, however, it's a bit different because while he does have the same type of reality manipulating powers, his powers manifest because of his personality, his multiple personality disorder. Because his mutation basically allows him to create new powers or absorb new powers from other people, from other mutants. So that each of his personalities has a different power and then depending on which one is in control, he can use those powers, you know, of, of the personality that is in control. But if he didn't have multiple personality disorder, maybe he wouldn't be as powerful, right? In the show, it seems they went more the Scarlet Witch way, which is like, oh, we don't really know what he can do, but he's super, super powerful, but there's really no definition to it. And I don't like that. I like the idea of each personality having one ability because it, it gave him a bit more... I hate to repeat myself, but it gave him a bit more definition. And also on top of that, the fact that he is actually dealing with a mental illness. They, they did that very well in season one, delving into the idea of mental illness and how it affects people, the relationships, etc. But it feels like after season one was done, now that the Shadow King is out of David's head, David should be okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I was never mentally ill. And I think that's a disservice to to the theme of the season one and just a disservice to mentally ill people in general. I wish they would bring back his multiple personality disorder. I think it would make things a lot more interested, interesting. However, I, I'm not betting that they will, honestly. I have read interviews with Noah Hawley, the, the creator, that made me feel like they won't because he has said that in season two David will be dealing more with the absence of the Shadow King from his mind, which is understandable and interesting in a way, but for the most part, it still feels like a letdown because my favorite part of David's character was just the fact that he was mentally ill and how that affected his powers and how the connection between his powers and his mental illness affected him as a person so it really bothers me that that aspect of it was gone I hope and pray that they bring it back for season two I'm not really convinced that they will so that was a bit of a letdown but overall in general like I said I love the show it was great it was entertaining it was wacky it was weird but in a good way it made you think about stuff it made you, like, the entire time you just weren't sure what was real and what wasn't. And I think that's the best kind of shows that push the envelope in a way. It's a bit like watching The Matrix for the first time. It changes the way you see things. And I really like that. Now, the show, like I said before, it's not for everybody. But I think if you're an X-Men fan, if you know Legion's backstory, and if you're into stuff that makes you think, like high-end sci-fi and matrix and ex machina and stuff like that stuff that puts a thought into your head and just refuses to let go i think legion is the kind of show for you if you can make it past episode one because episode one is a lot of setup but it's also like the wackiest of them all it's the craziest one of them all and i think if, if you make it past episode one and and like episode two from that point on you'll be hooked so Keep that in mind. If you haven't watched it, give it a try. I think it's definitely very much one of the best superhero TV shows that we've had in the past. Now, I don't know what the deal is between Marvel and Fox. I don't know how it works. I don't know if it has anything to do with the movies, what Fox actually gave Marvel in order to get the rights to make TV shows, but this one is worth it. It's really good. No, Holly is an amazing creator. He has incredible style, and I think if you make it past the second episode and enjoy it, 
you'll be in for the ride of your life. It's really, really great. So that's about it from me today about Legion. I don't know what I'll be talking about next week. I, I haven't really thought about it much. Maybe I'll do something Star Wars, but maybe not because Star Wars Day is always gone now. But maybe something anime. I, I'm not entirely sure. But as always, if you have any suggestions for topics that you'd like me to talk about, feel free to drop them in a comment. If it's anything that I like, anything geeky, like TVs, books, movies, anything that I have any knowledge of, I'll make sure to add it to my list of videos to make in the future. In the meantime, you can find me on social media. I am on Twitter and Instagram at girls are weird with underscores between the words and I am on Tumblr at girls are weird with hyphens between the words. You can find a Facebook page for this blog at facebook.com slash Narnia. And as always, be sure to visit my main webpage at freakinarnia.com. All my videos are up there in case you need to catch up on anything. While you're browsing the internet, please do visit my Redbubble store when I, where I make art based on quotes from my favorite fandoms and then you can use that art to print on different types of merchandise such as t-shirts and coffee cups and computer covers and all sorts of stuff like that so be sure to stop by take a look around and maybe purchase something while you're at it if you're in the mood it really does help me if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you like my stuff please subscribe to my channel I'm always glad to see new subscribers and new likes and new shares and new comments. It gives me life, so please keep doing that. And that's about it for me today. I will see you guys next week with another video from all the way in freaking Narnia. And may the fourth be with you always. Current status, can't recognize the timeline and every decision that Noah Holly makes. Ma makes. You're, or you're, I think I said this in my review for Days of Fe my favorite character, my favorite chapter. In in in, sort of makes you think like like.